Hi, I'm Gordon Robertson, and you're watching All Together Now with Roy and Melanie Fields. The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries. Today so on All relevant. Together Now. Right now. Well, I think this is the time it's where amazing. the Holy Spirit is calling us to greater accountability. Yes. I'm 58, and, and over the past two years, wow. I've had these wow. revelations wow. of how much my inner thoughts, Jesus. Um, you know, it, 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 what is coming out of my heart? Worship and healing. We run with fire. Sounds of revival, intimate worship, and fresh word. Live from the Runwood Fire Studio in Orlando, Florida. All together now. With Roy and Melanie Fields.
We'll be right back to All Together Now. Hi, I'm Gordon Robertson, and you're watching All Together Now with Roy and Melanie Field. We'll be right back. From worship leader Roy Fields comes his latest album, Stand Up. Call today and enjoy songs like Stand Up, Never Let Go, and You Are God. You will be able to experience the power of true worship straight from your home. You were there with gentle hands created. For your gift of $15 or more, you'll receive your copy of Stand Up, and for a gift of $35 or more, add the DVD documentary. See with your own eyes where this incredible album was birthed. Receive hours of behind the scenes footage and live interviews. And remember, every dollar that's donated today will go straight to spreading the gospel. Call now and get your copy of Stand Up for your gift of $15 or more. And add the DVD for a gift of $35 or more. We now return to All Together Now. And hi, welcome back to All Together Now. I'm your host, Roy Fields. I'm so glad that we have this opportunity to be with you as we are every single week where you can watch and see what God is doing in the earth. If you've been enjoying this program, we wanna hear from you. So there's some information at the bottom. Contact us, let us know what's going on. We wanna hear from you. It's great, to, it's great to really connect, you know what I mean? We try not to do TV the normal way. We're trying to change it up a little bit. And I think what you're gonna see today is gonna to be quite extraordinary. The guest I have on the program today is somebody that is definitely not a stranger to you. It may be for the first time that you get to know this person, but this is gonna be an amazing program. The guy I have on the show today, his father ran for the President of the United States. He's also the CEO of a very large broadcasting company. But here's what's more important. This man has changed a lot of people's lives through different things that he's done, and we're going to get into that today. He's been around the world. You've seen him on television. You've watched him mainly on the 700 Club, which also airs probably on this, this channel that we're on right now. And I want you just to, would you just sit back, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and let's just relax and get to know this gentleman a little bit more. Would you please welcome my guest to the Roma Fire Studio, Mr. Gordon Robertson. Hi, Gordon. Great to be with you. It is. Finally in your in home studio. It's it taken great. forever. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to Orlando much, but when I do, it's good to see you. Yeah, we tried to hook up last time and it didn't, didn't work. work. But we're here. We're here. Um, you know, I have to say this, and I want to say this to the viewers today, that you have been, I'm very personal with the people that watch, and that you have been an amazing friend to me. We first met through the Lakeland Revival in 2008. Can you take me back what you remember about that? Because you guys were reporting on that. What do you remember about that? How did that all come about? Uh, we were reporting on it, and I've forgotten the evangelist name that came up. Uh, I know that in French it means raspberry. <laughs> He's oh, Canadian. John Laframboise. Yeah, that's it. Got it. Uh, John came up, uh, and did a couple of chapels with us, and uh, John is just a wonderful man of God. I've lost track of him. I haven't seen him mm. uh, in about nine years. Um, and then um, you came up. There was a, a time with Catch the Fire and John and Carol Arnott right. at Founders Inn in Virginia Beach, and you were leading praise and worship, and we got to know each other, and then you came, and. At that point, I was doing some webcasts on spiritual gifts. I remember that. And you came in, and uh, we just, it was, it was really great. And then after the webcast, where friendships are really formed, we yeah. go to the local pancake house. <laughs> <laughs> There's other things that are formed there, too. <laughs> at, at, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, you know, we just sit and talk for hours. And... You know, what you were going through, um, you know, trying to raise a family, uh, start a ministry, and where God was, was leading you, and it was wonderful. And, you know, I, I recognize something about you that you've, you know, through growing up and everything, you, you've had your ups and downs and bumpy roads as well. You know, you've been through things that some people can't imagine that it could only be God that brought you through, you know. You, you were going after a career, and God touched you in 
I think India is what I remember you telling me. Yeah, I had a road to Damascus experience on the Godavari River in Rajamundri, India. Rajamundri means city of the king. And uh, of all places to have it, uh, it was at a Hindu temple, a Hindu god on, on the river. And it was in the middle of the night of Shiva. Uh, and it was an incredible experience. But God showed me how much he loved the Indian people in the middle of this idolatry where they were bowing down to stone cows and statues, statues, statues. I, I just, uh, it was overwhelming uh, how much he loved them. And after that, I couldn't go back and practice law. And I couldn't, I couldn't live for me anymore, if that makes any sense. Sure. But, um, was it just because you saw what was going on, or was you having like, were you ha <laughs> I just said, was you, I'm from the <laughs> South. I saw him. You this saw him? Just as I'm seeing you right now. Really? I saw him. This was an a, a open vision, a visitation. Describe I what saw, you saw, please. Uh, white tongues of fire that coalesced into a light, and I couldn't see a face or a torso, but I could see legs and feet, and he was standing on, uh, it was like moving sapphire, if that makes any sense. Sure. And it, um, yeah, uh, Jesus wasn't a historical figure anymore, and he wasn't something you learn in Sunday school anymore. Uh, he it was, was almost like it put skin was, on him. He was real. Wow. Skin's not the right word. Okay. Um, he transcends space and not time. And you can read that. You can read, I am the Alpha and Omega. You sure. can read these things. Um, yeah, he appears to the disciples, you, he appears through walls. When you see the transfiguration, when you see him, um, you, you're, it, you're never going to be the same. Um, you know, you know I, I, I look back on that, it was just an absolutely incredible experience and it changed my life. You still carry that with you to this day? Um, you can't help but carry it right. with you. I get I get people questioning, you know, you know, how do you know if an experience is from God or a dream is from God yes. or you yes. know, you know, how do you interpret prophecy? I say it's really easy, you know, you don't you can't get away from it. It's not that it uh, it's something given to you or anything. It, it literally grips your innermost being. And you you know, it, it I tell people, you know it's a prophetic dream when you stop saying, I had a dream, and you start saying, a dream had me. It turns around, where the, it so shapes you that you, you change. What about some of the people that are watching right now that say, Gordon, I've never had that experience. I imagine there's a many, many people that have never had that experience, and they want it. Well, you know, the... In Bible times, the, that experience is actually rare. Um, there were 12 disciples, but only a few got to see the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, many believers in the early church, but Paul says only 500 saw him physically. So um, Jesus says it is better to have not seen and believe. Um, and there is something to what I have experienced where I now feel responsible for that. Right. Like you have to produce fruit now in your life kind of thing, right? I have to let him produce fruit. <laughs> I, I understand what but you're I, saying. But I, that, have, I have to You're yield. obligated. Right. You're I, obligated. I don't, I don't have the convenience of doubt. Right. Um, and I like that. This is not to say it's that awesome. I've somehow lived a sinless life or anything. I've had plenty of mistakes sure. in ministry sure. since that event in March of 1994, but it defined my life. And I look back on the mistakes I've made, and I, you know, I asked him for, get, for forgiveness. I keep very short accounts uh, with God. I don't try to build up an inventory, well, but it absolutely changed me. Hear how I say this now with the heart that I say it in. When that happened, as glorious as it was, 
Did you also feel the fear of the Lord come upon your life from that moment on? And I don't mean in a spooky way or a, an angry God kind of way, but the fear of the Lord that Solomon speaks of, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom kind of thing? You, how, how to put this? You, you go back and forth from states of revelation. Uh, I talked to T.L. Osborne about it, and T.L. had a dramatic encounter with yeah. the Lord. Um, and it's interesting. I've done a lot of study of people that have had this kind of visitation. It's interesting that they change, but there's similarities. Um, and Hold that thought. I want him to get back into this in just a moment. I want to hear about this because if you're having revelations back and forth, I know there's people that want to have revelations like you and I. We've got to have these things in our life. We're going to be right back. We're with Gordon Robertson. Sorry, we got to cut to a break right now. We'll be right back in just a moment. We'll be right back to All Together Now. We now return to All Together Now. Hi, welcome back to All Together Now. Uh, we're here with Gordon Robertson. And uh, if you're enjoying the program, we want to hear from you. Connect with us. The information's at the bottom of the screen. And uh, we, we really like to hear from you if you're enjoying these programs. And uh, it, it's going to be great. Hey, listen, Gordon, you were talking about having revelations coming in and out. You know, we were talking about how when you had a visitation, an open vision, seeing Jesus, seeing the Lord himself. And I want you to go back into that story. You're talking about you had had a conversation with T.L. Osborne. Well, I needed to figure it out. Yeah, uh, of course. And, you know, as much as that I was raised in the church, obviously had a, a lot of Bible knowledge, um, this was out of my comfort zone, if you will, sure. and definitely out of my league. Uh, what does this mean? And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal all truth. And it was interesting, I, you know, that, that still small voice uh, sometimes can get really loud and <laughs> insistent. And uh, I was reading about T.L. Osborne and that voice spoke to me, I want you to meet him. And so I did. I was struggling with faith. I was struggling with miracles. I'd had this great visitation. I went on a preaching tour of the villages of India in the weeks following it um, and was seeing all kinds of manifestation. Every, everything where we, you hear about from Brownsville or Toronto or Lakeland. You went to Brownsville? All of, all of those manifestations were there. Um, Did you visit some of those places? Uh, I visited Toronto. I have visited Lakeland. I've I don't think I've ever been to Brownsville. Okay. But, but anyway, all of the, all of those men, I was trying to figure it out and, and, and really trying to figure out what does faith mean? Where does that come from? And I, uh, TL, he, absolute brilliant man. And I urge everyone to get everything he's ever written yeah. and listen to all of his uh, recorded messages. You'll learn a whole lot because he had a dramatic encounter and then spent decades preaching the gospel with signs following. And at the time, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I want you to meet this man. I didn't know any of that. Okay. So I just go, I arranged a meeting with him, and uh, he was very kind to me and, and just uh, very patient with my questions. <laughs> but he, he said something interesting about these visitations, and he says, well, we have moments of transcendence but then we don't. And so it, even when you look at the Old Testament prophets, you'll see an Elijah doing just incredible things and then running away from the queen and, and trying to hide and then saying, you know, it, it would be 
uh, better if I'd never been, you know, if, if I could die right now, that would be great. Right. You know, Jeremiah lamenting. He had uh, the voice of the Lord. He had the word of the Lord burning in his bones. And at the same time, he, he, he regretted it. Um, this and, is ministering to me right now because this is literally what I'm going through this, this, this past year for me. I ask you some of these questions because this past year for me, I have had the fear of the Lord come upon my life. It came out of nowhere. I, I already feared the Lord years ago. But everything you're describing right now, I'm literally experiencing this right now as a 40-year-old man. And I, I think a lot of people watching, but I just want to come back to personal between you and I. It's amazing how what you're saying is so relevant right now. Well, I think this is the time it's when amazing. the Holy Spirit is calling us to greater accountability. Yes. I'm 58, and, and over the past two years, wow. I've had these wow. revelations wow. of how much my inner thoughts, Jesus. Um, you know, it, 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 what is coming out of my heart is so important to God. Yeah. It is a lot more than your behavior and saying, you know, I'm, I'm able to chalk up that I observed this commandment today. He's very concerned about when you get into those stressful situations where you don't feel the anointing or, or things aren't working out for you well that day. What then is coming out of your heart? And I've, I've really been caught up short uh, by the Holy Spirit. And I'm not trying to put anybody under legalism or no. some kind of super holiness or anything like that. No. Your holiness always comes from Jesus. It's never going to come from you. But I think there is a... a a, an awakening, if you will, in the church of the need for us to love God with all of our heart. Everything within us. All of our heart. I got a friend of mine, you probably know his name. His name's Todd White. Todd says, when you squeeze, squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. He says, when you squeeze an apple, apple juice comes out. He says, shouldn't that be the same when you squeeze a Christian? Shouldn't Christianity come oozing out of him or her? Well, you, you look at our example, uh, Jesus in the olive press of Gethsemane, what comes out of him? Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's very human in that moment. And he's saying, Father, can this cup pass from me? Wow. I mean, he's very human in that moment. He knows what's going to happen. Goodness. And what comes out of him is not my will, but, but your will. will be yeah. done. And when you look at the rise of Christian persecution around the world today, yeah. uh, it is the greatest it's ever been in my life. Sure. I mean, I think you have to go back, you know, 2,000 years to find a more intense persecution of the church. Yeah. What's happening in the Middle East to Christians is uh, just horrific. Uh, and we're seeing a rise of, you know, I don't have another word for it, anti-Christian bigotry right here in the U.S., where if you profess Orthodox Christianity, I, I think we need to get it out of the political as, you know, it's right wing or liberal or any, No, it's just, what do you believe what the Bible says? Yeah, because the Bible's true. And is this Orthodox Christianity or are you inventing a new religion? And if you believe in Orthodox Christianity, get ready in today's culture to be persecuted, to be ridiculed. Uh, you're not going to have your head chopped off, but you're going to find increasingly it's going to be harder for you to have a job. Yet. Um, it's going to be increasingly harder for you to have a business open to the public. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that will test us. So you feel, you feel like it's coming and it's here now. I feel like we're in the end days. Yeah, me too. And you if, know, yeah, but you know, you got. If John can say that two thousand years ago, right, right, and then, okay, because everybody here right now is thinking to themselves, you know, well, we've been hearing that for decades. Everybody says we're in the last of the last days. Here's what I know: these are my last days. These are your last days. So, I want to talk to you. We don't have much time left. We've only got a couple minutes left, and this is one thing I, I, I tell people: I have such a hard time with television. You only got a half an hour airtime slot. So we're going to have them come over to RomaFire.tv with the rest of our conversation. But 
You said uh, that you're going to be persecuted for your faith. We now have a president in the United States that seems to set the tone for the rest of the world in America. And you have a little bit of experience here in the sense of your father ran for the presidency of the United States, Pat Robertson. Um, I want to talk about that journey that you were, what you saw, observed, and I want to get into where do you feel like we are as a nation right now? Because Gordon, I've talked to you just being really plain with you. I've talked to you over the years, and I remember sitting in your car in Virginia Beach, and I started asking you questions, and this was years ago. I don't even remember this, maybe four or five years ago. And I said, what do you think needs to change in the economy? And man, I got to tell you guys, he just starts spouting off things like, it, it was like wisdom, like wisdom, not just being, you know, law background. I could just hear wisdom from God out of you. And I said, I'll bet you what he's saying is completely true. And sure enough, it was like a year later, everything you said started happening and I was watching it just as you said it. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to jump on the bed and go, he's a prophet. <laughs> I wasn't saying that. But there's wisdom in you and I'm not being flattering, but there's wisdom and we need wisdom today. We, my generation. Now more than ever. More than and ever. And we need to recognize wisdom comes from God. Yeah. It's not going to come in the natural. And it begins. And we, we need that supernatural wisdom and yes. discernment and guidance daily. And if you hadn't had an experience with the Lord, I think it begins with having the fear of the Lord on you. But He's not, a, he's not an angry God who's watching yeah. your movie and going to slam you. He is, the fear of the Lord is you really recognize what? That He is he loves who you. He says. He loves you, but He, he is who He you. says He is. Loves you infinitely. Infinitely. And He loves you so much, He doesn't want to leave you where you are. It's beautiful. He'll take you as you are, but He's not going to leave you in that condition. Right. <laughs> Gordon, thank you so much. I appreciate you being appreciate on this program. You. Listen, we are going to, this is what's going to happen. We have now come to the end of this program. If you want to continue with us, we're going to continue our conversation here. You can go to runwithfire.tv right now and you can join us and you can watch it online right now as you're watching this. You can click on and finish this conversation. It's much longer than this right now. Thank you for watching. Keep on telling people about the program. And look, keep your eyes on Jesus. We are living in one of the greatest times I think we've ever been in, just as Gordon has said. So until next time, this is me, Roy Fields, and Gordon Robertson saying God bless you and goodbye.